Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to be giving you a rundown of Macromedia Flash 8 and Adobe Animate CC so you can familiarize yourself with the interface and the features the program has to offer. It can be intimidating, opening up a program being flooded with all these different windows and tabs that you don't know what they do, but hopefully this tutorial will be able to familiarize you with the different windows and features Flash is able to offer, and to more importantly make it more comfortable for you to use so that your life animating is easier and smoother. Now your first question is probably going to be, how do I get Macromedia Flash 8 or Adobe Animate CC? Well, the proper answer is that you go to Adobe's website and purchase a subscription to the Creative Cloud for access to all or just one of the programs that they offer. For Flash 8, there's technically no legal way to purchase the program. As Adobe purchased Macromedia and its products back in 2005 and rebranded Flash 8 into Flash CS3 and onward to CS6 and now Animate CC, there's obviously no legal way to get Flash 8 anymore. There's obviously other methods to attain the products, but I'd rather advocate the full legal way of purchasing the programs as I have personally done. If you don't wish to do this though, Adobe offers trials for all of their programs, so you can download them, activate the trial, and give it a shot to see if you like it or not. Now after you've installed Flash 8 or Animate CC or whichever version you prefer, you're going to be greeted with this menu screen with recent projects or to create a new project. For Flash 8, click Flash Document. For CS3 through CS6, click Action Script 2. For Animate CC, choose Action Script 3. I'll explain why choosing Action Script 2 is important later on in the tutorial. After you do that, a canvas similar to this, but more than likely with different settings than what I have, will pop up. We'll get to the different settings to this later, but right now let's run through the different windows that Flash has to offer. Like every program you've probably ever opened, it's got your file and help menus. You've also got edit, commands, control, and window. These drop down menus do different things, and as we progress in tutorials, you'll become more familiar with these windows or the keyboard shortcuts to make your life easier. Right in the middle of Flash, there should be this big white square around this gray area. This is going to be your stage or canvas. This is where your symbols, vectors, files, and everything else that you're going to be using is going to be placed so you see them in your Flash movies. Up above the canvas is your timeline. This is where your frames, motion tweens, and layers are going to be. This is another area where a bulk of your time is going to be spent, as this is where you handle the timing of your frames, motions, and all those other tedious parts of animation. On the left side of the screen you have your tools. They are what you're going to be using to manipulate, draw, and erase the objects on your stage. We're going to go through them real quick now. Selection tool is what you're going to be using to select symbols or images on the stage. Transform tool is going to be enlarge, shrink, and distort your symbols or images. Lasso tool gives you a more free reign of how you select things. Text tool is for creating text. Pencil tool is for drawing with non-weighted lines. The brush tool is used for drawing with weighted lines. The ink bottle creates a pencil tool like outline around whatever image you use it on. And on the opposite side, the paint bucket fills in those large spaces. The eyedropper tool is for selecting colors. The eraser tool is for erasing images, brush, or pencil strokes. The hand tool moves around the stage. And the zoom tool lets you zoom in and out with left clicks. Right below those, you have color options to choose for your brush and pencil tools respectively. You also have the option to default the colors back to black and white. Remove the color for whichever you have selected, and to swap the colors between them. Below that, you have the option whether or not to allow objects to be able to snap to one another. This can be used to align things more easily. And options to smoothen or straighten the lines that you draw with your pencil or brush tool. Below the stage, you have your properties, filters, actions, and parameters. We're not going to be covering actions too much in these tutorials, but I'm probably going to cover simple methods on how to use them to change the quality of your flashes for when you upload them on the web, like to DA. Parameters I've never found useful, so I always close that out. The properties let you change your canvas size, frame rate, stage color, and many other things as well involving your symbols. Filters let you, as the name suggests, add different kinds of filters to your symbols. On the right is where you have your library and color windows, and possibly your swatches as well. The libraries where all your images and symbols that you put into Flash are going to be kept for ease of access. To get something out of your library, you simply click on the file or symbol and drag and drop it onto your stage. You can also create folders in the library and rename the symbol and images to keep things nice and organized. 
I'm very particular about having things easy to find and organize, and it makes the workflow, in my opinion, a whole lot smoother and simpler, so you don't have to spend all that time looking for something. The color window, as it suggests, lets you change the colors a bit more freely than the options you're given over on the pencil and brush tool side. Swatches has a preset of colors you can use, or you can customize and add your own. And that's pretty much all for the windows in Flash 8. CS3 through CS6 are majorly the same as what Flash 8 is, but in those versions you have the ability to move the windows around and reorganize the workspace for your specific workflow. My personal preference is I generally keep it the same throughout each version. Now on to Animate CC, where it has a few new windows exclusive to the latest version that I think are going to be very useful. Right off the bat, Animate CC has two main windows I'd like to focus on. Frame Picker and Layer Depth. The Frame Picker is a window that allows you to see all the keyframes within a symbol and to click on whichever frame you want the symbol to show at a specific time. This, however, only works with graphic symbols. I'll explain the difference between symbols later. The Layer Depth feature is a brand new feature in Animate CC that, as the name suggests, allows you to add depth to certain layers and the objects on those layers. This is used in conjunction with Animate CC's built-in camera tool as a way to create an auto-parallax effect. If you don't know what parallaxing is, it's when objects that appear further away from your eye seem to be moving slower than objects that are closer to you. This feature is a godsend, and I'm sad to say I haven't had more time to play with it. Beforehand, you had to do motion twins on the timeline or in symbols. You had to time it to make sure things in the background were going slower, things in the foreground were going faster. And you had to have them move over certain durations of time, and it could really become a hassle to manage. This is an incredibly useful tool and welcome addition to the program. Also, as you heard me mention, Animate CC has a built-in camera tool. No more having to download cameras off new grounds or learning the action script to try and create your own. I'll obviously provide the links in the description to download the vCams that I've personally used for my versions of Flash, but be aware that the ones I used only work in ActionScript 2, not ActionScript 3. That's why I say it's important to choose ActionScript 2 for your document settings that when you create them in CS3 to CS6. You want to be sure when you create those file documents, you choose ActionScript 2 for these to work. Lastly, something big that I think is important in Flash is the symbols what they are, and the different types, and how you use them. A symbol can be a graphic, button, or movie clip. A symbol can include art, or files you import from another program, or anything that you create in Flash. Any symbol you create automatically becomes part of the library of your current document. Each symbol has a unique timeline stage, complete with layers specific to itself. You can add frames, keyframes, and layers to a symbol timeline, same as the main timeline. When you create a symbol, you're given three types. Graphic symbols are used for stack images and to create usual pieces of animation that are tied to the main timeline. Graphic symbols operate in sync with the main timeline and interactive controls and sounds won't work in a graphic symbols animation sequence. Graphic symbols add less to the FLA file size than buttons and movie clips because they have no interior timeline. The way they play is based on your main timeline. Movie clips help with create reusable pieces of animation that have their own multi-frame timeline that's independent from the main timeline. Think of them as nested inside of a main timeline that can contain interactive controls, sound, and even other movie clips inside of them. You can also place movie clips inside the timeline of a button symbol to create animated buttons. In addition, movie clips are scriptable with action script. Symbol buttons are used to create interactive buttons that respond to mouse clicks, rollovers, or other actions that you can do. You define the graphics associated with various button states, and then assign actions to a button instance. We're not going to be talking about buttons much, but I'll briefly cover them with the action scripts later on. And I think that should be everything you need to know for now about Flash's interface and way to get familiar with the program. I know this was a lot of information to cover and it's probably blowing your mind and it's a lot to grasp, but I think it's very important for you to know the program that you're going to be working in to some degree. We're also going to be using most, if not all, of these features in the future tutorials, so you're going to be seeing them around, they're not going anywhere. Though I think it'll help also to see them used in smaller increments and to see them in actual practical use. Anyway, I hope this has helped you in getting into that first step into sprite animation, we're just dipping our toes right now, hopefully we'll be able to get ankle and knee deep. As always, be sure to leave suggestions in the comments for anything else you'd like to see, or things that you didn't understand that you'd like me to cover and explain a bit better. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.